Hey there, movie fans. It's time for our brand new episode of, you know the letters, FYC, the only award season show that is not only super, super fun, but has not one, not two, but three extremely entertaining and informed pundits weighing in on Oscar season from now through the beginning of March 2025. We're going to be here bringing you great new content covering the ups and downs of award season. Joining me as always is the amazing Perry Nemiroff, and the mighty Jeff Snyder. Okay, so we are covering Best Actress on this episode of FYC. And overall, Perry, what is your take on this field? Is this a category where we have an embarrassment of riches? Or as in some cases in past years, just not enough to round it out? What's your take? I'm hesitant to say an embarrassment of riches just yet because there's still so many things that I'm looking at on this list that I haven't seen, but I will say my enthusiasm ticked up like a big old notch the past couple of days because I did see something that is uh, definitely going to be on the list. And now that I can talk about it from a place of authority, I am even more excited to have this conversation. Jeff, what about you? Are you rolling your eyes? Are you wondering what it is that Perry saw that she... Uh, is going I to be talking a lot about on this episode. I think I know what it is. But Jeff, what's your take on the field of best actress? I think Perry's smiling. It must be Naomi Scott for Smile Two. <laughs> um, smile I think it's, the Oscars. I think it's a good year actually for best actress. I think that there, are, again, I'll stop short of calling it an embarrassment of riches, but there is a lot to like here, and there's definitely going to be some snubs. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, this was definitely a case where. The first three uh, picks on my list were, you know, sort of slam dunks. They are definitely getting nominated. And then from that onward, like four and five, I was like, well, it could be this person, it could be that person. But without further ado, Perry, who was your number one pick for best I'm actor? So, so happy you came to me first because my number one pick is the star of the movie I just saw the other day. I am full blown obsessed with Anora. What a Anora. fantastic film. What like what a wild, fully engrossing ride that spans so many different genres and tones and accomplishes so much. And at the core of it is, of course, Mikey Madison. And she just delivers big every single step of the way and nails every aspect of that character and her situation. I... I'm not going to say I was surprised she was capable of everything she does in that movie because I've seen a lot of her work and I know how damn good she is. But that's a performance where someone basically does it all. And I very much look forward to that being recognized all throughout the season. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, Mikey Madison and Honora is my number two on my list. I felt like, uh, you know, this movie was just a, a exhilarating filmmaking from start to finish. I could not take my eyes off this movie uh, thank God there was a lot of levity to it. Um, so, of course, uh, this is the movie that won the top prize at the Cannes Film Festival. Jeff, where is Mikey Madison on your list? I have her at number three. I think that she's a lock for a nomination, but I stopped short of like calling her the front runner. I just don't know if the Academy is going to go for this. I find that her character is very passive in the second half. And, and I think a big part of her campaign comes down to that last scene, which I won't spoil, mm -hmm. and whether you buy that last scene and, and the emotional sort of climax of the movie. And I just did not quite buy it. So um, that's why she's three and, and not number one for me. All right. It's without a, spoiling yeah. anything, Perry, did you buy that last moment in the film? Oh, absolutely. And I also did not find the character especially passive through the second half of the movie. I, th I think the way that she acts changes throughout the movie, but I don't think I would describe any of it as passive. Uh, uh, yeah, Anora, she's, she's getting driven around. She's getting driven around in the backseat a lot. Someone else is in the driver's seat making the decisions. Uh, I mean, Anora, literally, because it takes place in a car. But I do also think that her her nudging in the way she does progresses the story in very particular directions. Oh, okay. Well, uh, as we get further into award season and more and more people have seen the Nora, you know, can really get into it without spoiling anything. Uh, I love this movie from start to finish. It starts off as sort of like a gonzo take on pretty woman, and then it becomes something very, very different. Uh, yes, I have Mikey Madison at two, Jeff Harris are at three, Perry has her at one. Jeff, what's your number one? Both my one and two are, are sight unseen. So I'm just going, uh, I just have faith in the Netflix team this year. I have Carla Sofia Gascon at number one for Amelia Perez. 
Uh, I just think that this, she, she has a, a narrative. She's going to be, you know, potentially the first trans uh, woman nominated for best actress, I believe. Um, she certainly seems poised to, uh, to achieve that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I've just heard fantastic things about Amelia Perez and, you know, she's playing the title character. So. Well, right. coming from an informed opinion on this, because I did see it and I love this movie. Uh, one of my absolute favorites of the year by far. And Carlos Via Gascon absolutely getting nominated. And she is my number one pick. Uh, this movie is exhilarating. Uh, just, uh, I went into this film with super high expectations after one, uh, a, a, a uh, and a best acting ensemble prize from the Cannes Film Festival back in May, and it exceeded my expectations in every way. And just Carla Sofia Gascon was absolutely magnificent. She is my number one pick for best actress. Perry, where is Carla Sofia Gascon on your list? Number two, and you know, I'll admit my my order can change, but I don't think these first two that that are on my list at least are getting bumped off. I think their nominations are guaranteed. And um, I mean, she's, she's a, like a total powerhouse in Amelia Perez. Like every time she's on screen, you can't take your eyes off of her, and like she commands every. There's a lot going on in that movie and a very particular energy. And I feel like it takes a very particular type of actor to be able to kind of like ground everything that's going on in that movie in, in one character that you get behind. And I think she did that exceptionally well. I agree completely. I'm a little surprised that they put Zoe Saldana in the supporting actress category because I think that she's actually in the movie more than Carlos Sofia Gascon, but I'm not complaining. She's, she's going to get nominated for supporting actress when we do that category. All right. So, uh, Perry, you and I have the same one and two, but flipped. Jeff, you have uh, Carla at one and Mikey at three. Who's your two? Again, sight unseen, but I've heard great things about this Angelina Jolie performance mm. and Maria. I, my fear is that it could be this year's maestro. And it's just like how many people are going to be like, eh, I don't really want to watch that movie. I don't really feel a connection to, you know, Maria Collins, the, 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 um, uh, opera singer, but I've heard she's amazing in it, and Pablo Lorraine does a great job with you know leading ladies, and so I have her at two for now. Pablo Lorraine. So this is a uh, Pablo Lorraine, the director's follow up to Spencer, which starred Kristen Stewart, which was a follow up to Jackie, which starred uh, Natalie Portman, and I, I mean it's that kind of film. It's all about about the person. It is like. He's got a voice. Uh, this is kind of a trilogy for Pablo Lorraine, uh, an excellent trilogy. And if you like what he did with those other prior, with those prior two films, you will like, love what he did with Maria. I thought she's magnificent. I have Angelina Jolie at number three for Maria Perry. Where is Angelina Jolie on your list, or is she? So at this point, I'm playing the game my way, and I yeah. don't have her on my list. Wow. I've said this on every single episode of FYC thus far. I'm just. Like I'm, I'm hesitant to include certain things until I see it myself. Obviously, that's not like a steadfast rule I abide by. If I did, you couldn't really play this game and make these predictions right now. But I did see other things that I think feature performances that are very deserving of being in the mix. And they're also, you know, maybe not like my top two slots, but I do think they're very much in contention in a realistic way. So at this point in time, I do not have her on my list, but I will fully admit the time might come when that will change. All right. Well, Perry, who is number three on your list then? I have Nicole Kidman for Baby Girl. And I will fully admit that movie might be a lot for the Academy, which we well know can be narrow-minded in some respects. But given the, the accolades she has received thus far and how that movie, and particularly her work in it, has been striking many people out there, myself included, I do think she has a very real chance of getting in, especially if A24 runs a successful campaign. I mean, she's Nicole Kidman after all. She's doing great work. She's got A24 at her back. I feel like that might be the trifecta that could push her into what I'm now acknowledging is a competitive category. I, I, I feel the same way you do in terms of like, well, I haven't seen the movie yet and I have not seen Baby Girl yet. However, so I have Nicole Kidman as my number one honorable mention because of all the talk I've been hearing, like what you just said, Jeff, is Nicole Kidman on your list? If so, where? She is. She's number four. She is hey. next on my list. Um, I think I mean, she was fantastic in the movie. The movie is really, really good. 
Um, Helena Rain does a great job with it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, just like the, the way that she conveys that, that, like the character knows what she's doing is bad, but she can't help but want it. And I and I actually really like that trailer that A twenty four cut this week, where it's like get exactly what you want this Christmas. Um, I think that's a, a fun way to sell it, and it's yeah, it's a, it's a female empowerment story. So, okay, so Jeff, you have Nicole Kidman at number four. Harry, yep. who's your number four? My number four is someone that I don't know if she's going to be on your list, but I thought this was one of the best performances that I saw at TIFF and of the whole year. I went with Fernanda Torres for I'm Still Here. I also think that movie is just plain old exceptional and needs even more credit than it's already getting, but... She's, I mean, she's yet another powerhouse. And when you think about the arc that her character needs to go on, it really is just like hugely impactful and stunning work. And then when you read up on it and you get a better understanding of why this film exists to begin with, it just like moves you even more. And I want to see this film get recognized in many more categories beyond this one. There you go. Uh, Jeff, do you have uh, Fernando uh, T- Fernanda Torres on your list? No, I, I keep seeing this movie pop up on, on pundits lists and predictions and stuff. To it's me, it has no, good. it has no, I mean, I'm sure it is, but it, to me, it has like no profile uh, this award season. So while the international, you know, body could carry her to a nomination, like I'm sure at this point years ago, like were, were we talking about Cold War, you know, in, in early October? Oh, yeah. But yeah, right now I'm just like, who is this person? What is this movie? What's it about? When's it coming out? Who's putting it out? I know nothing. Sony, so. Sony Picture Classics has it, so we're like Maybe we know right. they have the ability to do something with it. But I like, I'll fully admit, you're right. I think the yeah. momentum needs to to pick up considerably in order to push her into the category. I just think in a tough year, I, yeah, she's not she's not there for me. I uh, I have Fernanda uh, number two on my honorable mention list, and that's because I haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, but I hear I've heard great things. I have seen her name on the uh, list of some of our other pundit friends. So as I say every week on FYC, this is not the first time we are covering Best Actress. We are going to do this again and probably again and maybe even again after that. The list is going to change, and I fully open myself up to Fernanda making it into my top five. But for now, she's my number two. Honorable mention, I want to talk about my number four, Demi Moore, for The Substance. That's a performance. She is fantastic. I saw this movie again uh, on Sunday night at the AMC Burbank. I freaking love this movie, and I love Demi's performance in it. Mark Qualley also. Uh, this is would be her first Oscar nomination if she gets nominated. And I hope she does because she is fantastic in this movie. I know both of you guys loved it too. So uh, is Demi Moore going to round out your list? That's the question. Perry? She actually does. She's my number five. Um, Again, I have to to admit the substance is a big swing that maybe the bulk of the Academy will not embrace. I absolutely loved it. I think it's an exceptional film. And I think she's delivering just like grade A work in it. I don't want to spoil anything. There's obviously more extreme things that happen in the movie. But one of my absolute favorite performance beats of hers is like literally her just standing in front of a mirror. And I think it's one of the most stunning scenes that I've seen all year. I'm also really encouraged by the fact that the substance with its theatrical release seems to be catching on in the way it needs to spread word of mouth. And I am hoping that that continues, but the substance having any chance at the Oscars very much hinges on what happens in the next couple of months. It's either going to continue to pick up or it's going to fall off a cliff and fade fade away from this conversation. So I am hopeful that it goes one way, obviously, and not the other. So, you know, the, the, uh, you know, we talked about this a few times already. Oh, is this movie going to be too far out for the Academy? And, you know, I've always like come to the defense of the Academy in that respect, because, you know, when you have everything everywhere all at once and Parasite winning best picture in the last few years, and I, and also the fact that the Academy has almost tripled in size over the last five years, uh, I think the Academy has gotten much, much more diverse and much more open to far out movies. But Perry, having said that, I still think this might be a little too far out, even for the brand new and improved Academy. But, but regardless of like that, I mean, I think maybe the film might have a hard time getting nominated for best picture, but I just think, you know, just as a comeback story, 
like with Brendan Fraser in, uh, you know, The Whale, uh, who won that Oscar, you know, thanks to you, Perry. Um, I think to me more... I think Demi Moore gets gets in. And Jeff, the question is, are you going to make it three for three in this? Well, Mance, did you have Kidman in your honorable mentions or did you have her yes, in your I list? I did. I had Kidman in my honorable mentions. So, so we haven't gotten to one of your choices then, right? Uh, that is correct. We have not. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to surprise us. Uh, June I I thought we had I thought we had a mind meld going, Mance, but we don't. Um, yes, I do have Demi. I thought we do have uh, Demi Moore. Great. Oh. Great. Yeah. All right. I Great. thought we had the same five, but you didn't have Kidman. Uh, yes, Demi Moore is on the list so for me. That makes I, me very happy. I think Wait, she's well, so Jeff. like incredible in this movie, and I do think it's it's like you said, it, it's it's Travolta in Pulp Fiction, it's Robert Forster and Jackie Brown. This is like a huge comeback role for her. I don't see how they ignore it, even if the movie isn't entirely their taste. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it's universal. Like you say, the Academy is becoming international. Like these beauty standards, p women face all over the world. Um, and, and it, uh, yeah, I just thought this was a very, very memorable performance. So I do have her at number five. Okay. And so you have her at number five. So, so. And that means I win, I believe my five are in. Your five are in. Okay. Wait a minute. So, so what the three of us had the same three, like, we have we agree on three of them. We agree on Carlos Sofia Gascon. We agree on Mikey Madison. We agree on Demi Moore. Okay. So the other two that you have, Jeff, are who? K Kidman, who has two votes, right? Kidman, yeah. And Jolie, okay. who has two votes. Right. Okay. Uh Perry, who are your other two? Um, I oh my my other two were Fernanda Torres and Nicole Kidman. So okay. Jeff's Nicole Kidman no. puts her on the list, and you two sharing Angelina Jolie puts her on the list. Okay, but I still have to say what my number. So do we do yeah. all five of your put choices, Perry Normal? Yep, I'm covered. Yeah, yes. we do all five of yours, Jeff. Yes. All right. So that means we still have to get to my number five. Yes. My number five. My number five is. I just want to say, you know, like. like, like <laughs> conversations because I, I I have to say that whether it's virtually or in person with you guys or with anyone else, you, these conversations I have with the two of you are my absolute favorite conversations I have with anybody about Oscars or Emmys. So with that, okay, my number five is somebody yes. who it deserves to win an Oscar already. I already know. Oh, where I know where you're going. <laughs> also, though, I mean, you know, uh, there's 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 other people like this was a tough number five because I feel like there's a movie that came out earlier this year uh, that um, I loved, and I think Perry, you loved it too. But uh, I just feel like Civil War is just it's oh, not yeah. about enough. So, so Kirsten Dunst, as much as I want to put her on this, and she is in my honorable mention, she's not my number five. So that means my number five goes to an actress who, like, has has elevated films that you know that I liked but didn't love, but I love because of her. And in the movies that I did love that she's in, I love them even more. So that is why my number five is, you know, I I. Look, you mentioned June Squid Perry. I, I really like her. It's I, Amy Adams. It's Amy <laughs> Adams, right? Hey, <laughs> uh, Perry. I mean, like June Squid. Like I would like to see that happen. He's my number three honorable mention. I, and I feel like great. I said her name with a tone, man, and I didn't want that to come off as dismissive. I would genuinely be very happy to see her be a serious contender in this. Category. June Squibb's right. nine for me. And by I the way, guys, I like I mean, the she's in the mix. The next time we talk, I mean, maybe she is, but right now my number five uh, is going, you know, like, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> all right. My number five is Perry. Who is it? I think we've said her name a couple Amy times Adams. already. It's Amy Adams for Night Bitch. Yes, it is Amy Adams <laughs> for Night Bitch. Now, here's why. I went, you know, I'm sure you all saw it uh, at Toronto. Uh, I went to that film thinking it was going to be really kind of a far out movie like uh, like Poor Things, where I loved the performance, but you know I wasn't crazy about the movie. But I was really surprised by how grounded and relatable Night Bitch is. 
at not just for for a woman with kids, a uh, woman who's married with kids, but also, you know, maybe the guy who neglects the woman who's taking care of the kids. I just thought it was an extremely relatable, grounded story. Scott, we, we are all night bitch. We are all night bitch. We are all night bitch. Put but that on the T-shirt. Who has been nominated six times. Shall we go through those six nominees? No. Right. American <laughs> Hustle. <laughs> The Master, amazing movie. I think The Master is my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie. The Fighter. Oh God! Oh God! You know, yeah, no. Have you seen Have you seen The Master lately? All right, I'm totally digressing here. But yes, Amy Adams is my number five. I, I just thought that she was fantastic. And yeah, the movie gets a little kind of, I guess, for lack of a better word, weird. But for the most part, it is a totally relatable story. I mean, anyone watching this film is going to go, yep, I get that. I'm, I'm totally there. And Amy Adams just absolutely crushes it. So so I know she's not on your list, but is she in your she, honorable mention? Number one honorable mention. She was the toughest cut. I had her in there at, at the very end. But then I, I just I do think that the passion behind Demi Moore um, could could lift her. But yeah, Amy Adams is fantastic in Night Bitch, and that movie was better than I was expecting. Okay, how about you, Perry? I have not seen Night Bitch yet, which is why she's not, which is like one of the primary reasons, at least why she's not on the list, but also just, you know, being an outsider looking in and hearing the conversation, it definitely didn't feel like she had the same amount of overwhelming support that certain other people were getting out of TIFF. So that's kind of why I bumped her down on the list, but I'm definitely not cutting her out of the conversation whatsoever. I, I just feel like Amy Adams, you know, or the film itself, um, the sort of chatter that I, that, you know, you know, the other pundits that we all know, you know, like Pete Hammond and Scott Feinberg, Clayton Davis, all those people, you know, they all went, oh, like that was actually a really good movie. You know, like that was not as the title suggested or, or as sort of the first trailer suggested, it was, was not that far out. It was, let totally me ask you this though. Okay. If you're an Academy member. Yeah. Do you want to give Amy Adams her seventh nomination for a movie that, you know, she's not going to win for, right? She was, she was good, but it, you know, most people are going to watch this on Hulu. Or do you want to give Demi Moore her first nomination of a, well, of a remarkable career? Look, I, great point. And there's also, by the way, there's also Tilda Swinton for the room next door and Julian Moore for the, for the room next door. And Sir uh, Sharon. And, and, and the, the big one I thought was actually Marianne John, uh, Marianne John Baptiste from Hard mm -hmm. Truths. Yep. Right. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, okay. So I'm I'm overruled because you don't have Amy Adams on your top five. So that means uh, it comes down to Nicole Kidman or uh, Fernanda Torres, right? No, I think it's um, Angelina Jolie because two of you have oh. her. All right. Uh, look, and, I, and two of us have Nicole Kidman. Okay. So two of us have Nicole. Ki uh, have, two of us have Angelina Jolie. Two of you have Nicole Kidman. So who gets who gets who makes the cut, guys and girls? Those Don't two. they both? Yeah, they well, both no. make it. Oh wait, well wait, no. Mikey, Mikey, Carla, Demi, right. Right. Nicole, and Angelina. All right, you're right. Those are the five. Those are the five. Those are the five. Those Solid are your five. Chef. Wow. All right. All right. Now look, we're gonna cover this again and again. But if this does come down to these five, like, you know, when the nominations are announced in January, Jeff, I'm going to remember this conversation. I'm absolutely going to give you credit. Amy Adams at six. Amy Adams at six. Amy Adams. Uh, I'm really, Perry, when you see Night Bitch, I'm really, really curious and to see what you listen, think. Listen, credit to Perry. I think Perry's the one going out on the limb here with, with Fernando Torres. And it's not crazy. I'm not, like, no. slapping it down. No, I haven't I seen it. crazy. Um, I just think that that movie needs a bigger profile. So I think we're on the money this episode, guys. I, I, Honestly, the I craziest think, thing anybody said was that you think the master is Paul Thomas Anderson's best movie. I, I, you know, I, I do. And I, I just rewatched Magnolia, which I think is a great movie. But the master, I think it's his most fully realized film. I think the master is a masterpiece. I, I, I didn't think that at the time when it came out in 2012, but I think that way now. I think it has aged very well. Sidetrack, if you want to rewatch it, let me know what you think. No what? love for us uh, for Cynthia Erivo in, in Wicked, huh? I need to see that movie first. I need to there, see it. there is no one on this planet. Uh, there's many people because Wicked has a lot of fans. <laughs> I am so eager to give that movie all the credit in the world, but I need I need to see that one first. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I mean, I just like I don't know. I I, I want to like that movie. 
I, I, I still go back to CinemaCon when they had all this footage and not one <laughs> musical performance. I thought that was strange. But there you go. Those are our top five uh, nominees for this edition of Lead Actress uh, for the Academy Awards. Carla Sofia Gascon for Amelia Perez, Angelina Jolie for Maria, Mikey Madison for Honora, Demi Moore for The Substance, Nicole Kidman for Baby Girl. I cannot wait to see that movie now after this conversation. So make sure you join us for every episode from now until March of FYC. And make sure that you share, 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 share FYC on your social media platforms. Even if you think, oh, everyone's watching or everyone's listening, share it anyway. Do your due diligence. Do us a solid share FYC. And while you're at it, while you're here, just scroll down right now, right now to where it says subscribe so you can subscribe to Perry's YouTube channel. We'll take a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Scroll down. Scroll down. Okay. There it is. It's right there. Hit subscribe. Good going. Thank you very much. And while you're at it, make sure you subscribe to Jeff Snyder's newsletter, theinsnyder.com. And also check out Jeff on our good pal, Johnny Roca's uh, YouTube show, The Hot Mic, where Jeff and John are going at it with all the latest scoops and uh and everything you want to talk about movies and make sure you know on some mornings if you live in southern california you catch me all morning long covering entertainment news on ktla or watch ktla news on ktla.com and with that that brings us to an end of this edition of fyc so until the next episode you know the drill fy see you later see you later